what is up guys it is Bucky and welcome to your second Objective-C tutorial and in this tutorial well in the last tutorial we opened this program and we ran it and in this tutorial we're going to be understanding what this program means and also adding uh, just a little bit of code so the first thing I want to point out and the first thing that you guys should know is something called a comment now we have one comment in here by default that Xcode gave us and it says insert code here now what a comment is is it's just something that the user can insert that doesn't affect the program at all you can add one comment or a hundred comments it doesn't affect the program at all the only purpose of a comment is to make it easier to read or understand so for example you can write insert code here or you can write my name is Bucky and you can write as many of these comments as you want and say you have a huge program and says and you made some weird method um, you can write a comment to tell you what the method is but we'll be going over this later on but anyways if you add two uh, forward slashes and put some text this is a single line comment and there's also something called a multiple line comment which is you do forward slash then asterisk excuse me first slash asterisk and then have some text and do asterisk forward slash and this is a comment if you want to write it on multiple lines but like I said we're not going to be commenting anything because what we're going to be doing is kind of simple I just uh, had to show you guys what a comment was in case you came across them in like any books or anything so now let's go ahead and start understanding what this program means there's a lot of extra stuff that we really don't care about but I know you guys are going to be like alright just tell me what it means anyways because I'm curious well the first thing right here I'll go line by line the first thing is called an import statement or import state well you know this is called an import and what this is is basically there was certain stuff that you have to do on every program and it took up a bunch of lines so whenever you see import it pretty much means include uh, other bit of code and put it in this program so developers got kind of aggravated of having to type the same stuff over and over and over again so what they did is they put it in a file called foundation H and what you have to do is just import that file and then it says alright instead of typing all this I'm just gonna import this one big file so this is actually a file that was already created for us by some awesome people so we don't have to type an extra bit of code so anytime importing a file is pretty much just using another bit of code from somewhere else we'll learn about more about that later on now the next thing you see is this int main and this is actually the entire method that's wrapped you see this is called or excuse me your function header and these are arguments right here and this is the function statement now let me explain a computer program all it is is it's built up of a bunch of functions so if I was a computer program one of my functions would be brush my teeth one of my functions would be drive a car one of my functions would be um, brush my teeth again or eat food or something so if I have all this stuff then and I ran it in a computer program it would be like alright you got all this stuff to do but where do you want me to begin well main is a special function that says alright if we have a hundred functions we want you to start with this one so this pretty much the keyword main gives the computer program a starting point of where to start so later on when we build ten more functions it always starts at main and since we have one you'll be kinda of confused maybe but you'll see later on when we have more functions and like I said inside a function is a bunch of these things called statements and you see each one of them ends with a semicolon what a statement is is pretty much a bit of instructions so you have a function and inside the function is just a set of instructions so for example if I had a function which this one's called main but if I was programming a robot I would make a function called make a grilled cheese sandwich and its first statement would be get out the bread its second statement would be put butter on the bread third one fry the cheese and the fourth one would be eat it so you have a main function which is like a main task and these statements are like separate bits of instruction telling you what to do and they each must end with a semicolon 
So now let's go over what each of these statements mean real quick. This one, again, the exact syntax we'll be getting in later on, but NS auto release pool, this pretty much creates a pool of memory. So you need to reserve some memory in order to run your program. So it's pretty much your program saying, hey, iMac, I heard you got some memory. And your iMac's like, yeah, what of it? I got like 10 gigabytes. And then your program's like, well, I have this awesome program here, so let me borrow some memory. I'll give it back later. And then your iMac's all like, all right, here you go. And, you know, that's pretty much what pool does. Kind of reserves memory or rents it from your computer. Now, an NS log, the next statement, now that we have our memory, this is pretty much something to log information or display it on your screen. So anything that goes in the parentheses of NS log is just going to be printed out on your screen. In this little at sign, if you didn't have the at, it would be a different kind. It would be a C string. And this is not going to make sense, but an at sign, um, it's just proper coding for an NS log. So this NS log, all you need to know is it prints out stuff on the screen. So this one stores memory or reserves it. This one prints stuff on the screen. So now that we created our pool, why the heck are we draining it? Well, what this means is you're pretty much saying, hey, we're done with the memory, I'm going to drain it, and then your computer's like, alright, thanks for the memory back. So this one says, alright, we need some memory, do some crap right here, and then once we're done with the memory, we got to give it back. I mean, it's only fair, we got to drain it. And we'll be going over those keywords later on, but this is the basics. And lastly, every function has a return value. This integer means, alright, I have this function called main and I'm gonna need something back. I'm gonna need an integer back. Well, what this statement right here says is, all right, I'm gonna return the value of zero back. Every function has to return something. Well, there's void, but we'll get into that later on. And when you return zero in a computer program, it means that everything went perfect. So, for example, you might have um, a check earlier on in the program and you might return nothing at all and not zero or another number aside from zero and your computer automatically knows if it gets anything aside from zero if it gets a letter or any other number then something effed up so it's looking for the zero and if it doesn't get it you're gonna get some error messages so if you finally get to this return zero, it says, all right, this went good, this went good, this went good, I can finally return zero, which is pretty much my program telling the computer, all right, this program went good, it ended normally. So the last thing that I want to mention, well, that's pretty much good enough for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll mention mm, some other stuff, but I mean, we had a pretty good run in this tutorial, so that's pretty much the basics of what this program means and I know you guys are probably still confused but later on when we get programming it'll all make sense I promise when we actually use it so for now thank you guys for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time